Now then, um, something a bit different. I picked this up oh, a couple of days ago. It's a big LED spotlight, not really a spotlight, a floodlight. And I just wondered how good it was and whether it'd do well over my metal turning lathe to really illuminate well. So I plugged it in and it was fine. I left it running for maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds. Everything was fine. Um, and I've just been and plugged it in again and it's nice and bright and then you started to get a weird like humming noise. And I thought, oh right, that's why I've got it because there's something a bit adrift. Now then, this bit here is a sensor of some form for PIR or some like movement sensor or something like that, or daylight sensor. And I noticed it started to get quite warm. So I think this is probably resurrectable, but we need to get digging in there. So it started crackling a bit and all sorts of things, and then running at very low light output. So I'm just going to plug it in again and we'll show you what it does and if it makes a noise again and then we'll start taking it apart. So I've got my quick connector here and it's unplugged and earth to the middle, neutral to the, that side and live to that side. Let's plug it in. Hopefully you can hear that noise. Doesn't sound good, does it? So I think we should um, have a look, maybe take the whole sensing thing circuit out and just have it as a flood. Because I twiddle the uh, twiddlers at the back of the sensing unit and nothing seemed to happen. Um, and I'm sure that noise is not right, so let's have an investigate. Last time the brightness went down. so. Uh, and that's not warm anymore. But having watched some of Big Clive's videos, it could quite well be that there's a capacitor dropper in here to cut the voltage down. But that buzzing noise, noise doesn't sound right. So, um, onwards and onwards. Let's turn her over. This is a 100 watt, so it says. And I used my uh, uh, watt tester, uh, which is when it started acting up. But I used the watt tester and it, was, it started off at about 35 watts and gradually crept up to about 50. So I ain't got a clue what that means. But let's have a look. Let's get rid of this handle to start with. that's that out of the way. So what do we do? We can undo that bit and see what happens or we can take the front off and I think we take the front off. And there's these clips here which are a bit solid. So how we're we going to get those off. I think once we've got a couple off Right, we need something underneath there. Let me go and get a block of wood. Okay, so I've got this off. There's a rubber seal there. But interestingly enough, there's some water. So I'm not sure how that's got in there. But it could be from here. 
Whereas that's loose on there. So what we need to do now, I think, is undo these screws. So luckily they, they're coming undone. We've got another screw there. We have got another screw there. It's an earth. And I remember Big Clive saying that a lot of these have got an earth but then it's not attached. So water or something like that. But there's nothing else. So that one's drying out. But there's nothing on the back. So I suspect there might be a capacitor in this sensor unit. But the live, or should we say the mains input, goes directly to the board. And then there's some other wires. A neutral. And that comes off the live. And then there's an extra wire there. Interesting. We've got one capacitor there. And a diode. So I think we need to take the sensor unit apart. Okay, so it's another day, and I had a look at um, the footage from this point on, and it was rubbish. There was a lot of experimenting and messing about, and this and that and the other. So to make things a bit clearer, we're going to start again from this point on. Now, I took the circuit board out of that little box and there was a lot of burnt stuff on there. And I tried to get the capacitor out. For some reason, it didn't want to come out very easily and the board was starting to fall apart. So I got violent with it. So here is the capacitor and it is, just to remind ourselves, it is a 564J and I think that is 564 picofarads. So effectively it's half a microfarad. So we can just check that because I've got a meter. So we'll put this meter on microfarads, 20 microfarads. And we'll just make sure that this is shorted out. half a microfarad basically so that's what it says on the tin or thereabouts it says 0 0.6 0 0.56 and this is 0 0.53 so it's not as if it's not doing what it's supposed to do so we can use that in the circuit so that's that and the other thing was that's what's left of the resistor and I'm just digging my multimeter out here set on ohms now the the leg of this resistor is a little bit as if there's nothing there really Seventy two ohms. Let's put it on the two hundred range. Fifty six ohms. 
or thereabouts. So because um, I can't deal with all these fancy colours, because some of them are a bit difficult to discern, I found another resistor and that's 82 ohms. So that's close enough. So let's put this together and see what's going on. I did go from that hot there to bits on the board. Let's switch the meter on for a start. That would be helpful. I went from there to see whether there was any connection on this board at all. So I think that is just an in. It's just a solder point because I can't see any connection anywhere and up here the video card just filled up typical so what was I saying if there's any connection on this board between there and there I was hoping to find it so I don't think there is so that's just an in and an out hopefully it's just a solder point so any power that does get to this probably comes from here but I might be wrong I can't see any tracks in amongst this lot and I don't really know what I'm looking for so having gone through that I think what we're going to do is take this power here go through the capacitor but also have that resistor there and effectively that is what was on this board because there, there's um, this I don't believe was a switch mode power supply or anything like that or a book regulator or all those complicated things because there's no choke in here there's just some capacitors and a chip and I think this was all to do with the sensing and that um, relay there so let's just um, work this out I've got a soldering iron on the go so let's just uh, solder a few things together There we go, and then, I mean if this works, which I know it will, because in the old footage I got something working, but I did have all sorts of resistors and things like that, I was experimenting, and I've got a quarter microfarad, 0.22 picofarad um, capacitor here, and I put it in parallel with that one, just to see the differences. But we'll maybe experiment later on. So power comes down here. The voltage is reduced by this capacitor. And then the current is uh, held back by this resistor, and that's it. So hopefully, with this slightly different setup, it will happen. So I'm just going to plug it in now. Contact, there we go. It's brighter than it was, and actually... When we put those deflectors on there, that will probably be good enough. And if we don't drive those chips too hard, then um, they'll last forever. So let me just put things back together. So here we are. I've got that uh, diffuser 
or whatever you want to call it, clipped in place. The clips are really quite solid and hold that ceiling quite well, but quite difficult to put it back together. It didn't just go piff. Um, I've also got uh, an energy meter there. Um, before I go any further, i just like to thank Big Clive. Cheers Clive for the information that you've uh, given in loads of your other videos. I wouldn't have been able to even have a clue without um, the stuff that you've taught me. And it, and it goes again with my policy of if there's a channel that I find particularly relevant or I've learnt something from it and I talk about something similar then I'll always reference it. There is a bit of a pernicious policy within some of the more popular um, YouTube producers to um, keep everything close to their chest. A bit pointless I find. But um, anyway, thank you very much Clive. So let's just um, have a go with this. I've also got, just down there, a quarter microfarad. 22 pico farad extra capacitor so I'm just going to um, just for purposes of illumination and learning I'm going to put that in series with the half microfarad capacitor a bit later on so let's just see what happens plug this in And that shows, you probably can't see it, 3.5 watts. That's quite low. Let's put this other capacitor across there. Five point one. Oh, that's um, interesting. Five point one. Well, we're going to keep that then, because it's still nowhere near the uh, full brightness of this flood. But I think that will make a very good work light. So, just as an extra, I've put a one and a half microfarad capacitor in there, and on the the meter now we're showing 10.4 watts that'll make a brilliant work light I'll leave that at that and uh, just as an extra on the first part of this video you might have heard tractor in the background and of course it's hay time so the eco lodge meadows the long meadow and the woods meadow have all been cut now um, and I'll just add a little bit of footage of the finishing of turning the hay for the first time. And here on the lodge It's haymaking time. Anyway, learnt something else again. Catch up with you soon.